Today, my friends, I want to talk about traffic. You hear a lot about traffic in Denver from the locals about hmm, how it's not so great. It's bad. I hear a lot of complaints. I've complained plenty, especially about certain stretches in town, certain pieces of I-25, I-70, Santa Fe, etc. And more than that, even the big thing you hear is that how traffic has gotten worse. It's not like it used to be. More congested, more people, harder to get around. And indeed, I have felt that in the time I've lived here. Traffic, it seems, has gotten significantly worse. Part of that, I believe, is just a growing pain of a city. But what I want to figure out in this video is, comparatively, how bad is Denver's traffic really when weighing it against different cities in America? Where do we stack up? So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to discuss some of the biggest bottlenecks in the city and biggest areas to avoid, especially during peak times. And at the end, we're going to take a look at why you may be less likely to receive a traffic citation from Denver police going forward. Yep, there's always a silver lining. If you're new to the channel, I'm Sam Newman. I'm a Denver real estate agent. It's my goal to be your go-to guy for anything real estate in the Denver Metro. So if that's you, please do reach out. The squad and I would love to see if we can help you. So to look at actual traffic numbers, I'm using the TomTom traffic index ratings. TomTom, remember them? They were a competitor of Garmin back when you used to have a GPS system in your car. There was a period of time before smartphones became ubiquitous when if you wanted to get where you're going, if you wanted to not rely on printed out MapQuest maps, you had a GPS. Garmin was the big one. TomTom was the one there too. I don't know if they did other things. Probably. I don't know what they're doing now, but I do know that they are analyzing traffic data. So what they do is analyze a bunch of different criteria based on cell phone data, basically. And they rank which cities and which metro areas have the worst traffic in America and indeed the world. And that's an important point because if you look at their 20 2024 rankings, American cities are nowhere in the top 10 or even near there. Worst traffic in the world. These are ranked worst city, worst metro area for traffic to least bad to best, I guess. Colombia, Peru, Peru, India, India, Colombia, India, India, Peru. We got down at number 10, the Philippines, a lot of Colombia, more India, Indonesia making the list. Vietnam popping in at number 24. To get to the worst American city for traffic, you have to go all the way down to number 85 on the world list. So I don't know, I wasn't expecting an American city to be the worst traffic in the world, but I thought maybe one or two would make the top 10. No, New York City, which is the one everyone would expect, is number one for worst traffic in America, but at world rank, that is number 85. Kind of crazy. By the way, you can toggle this either by city, actual within city limits or metro area. I'm looking at metro area here because I think it gives a better picture of where traffic is bad. If you're driving and have to drive a lot, you're probably not just staying within city bounds. Let's look at how bad traffic is in metro areas and see where the Denver metro area stacks up. Okay, so for the top three, yes, number one is New York City. Then you have number two, Miami, Florida. Didn't know it was that bad down there, but don't spend much time there. And number three, Chicago. So they use a number of criteria. The way they're categorizing, the way they're ranking is average travel time in 2024 per six miles. So how long in this metro area does it take you to get six miles? For New York, it's 18 minutes and 36 seconds. The next close is Miami, 14 minutes, 53 seconds. Huge, huge gap. That's why New York is number 85 in the world. And to get to Miami, number two, you have to go to number 182 in the world rankings. You go Miami, Chicago, San Francisco. Number five is Philadelphia. All these are all within 14 minutes. So much, much less separation there. New York City, worse by far, to the surprise of no one. Tom Tom also looks at the change from 2023, how bad it got or how much better it got. New York City got 28 seconds worse. Congestion level, average additional time percentage wise, it takes to get somewhere in traffic compared to driving in a free flowing condition. And then they do a congestion world rank. So what you're seeing just between New York and Miami, and we'll move on soon here, but the congestion world rank is actually way, way worse in Miami. It's number 36 in the world. New York is 161. So the congestion in Miami is worse, but still in New York, 
work, it's going to take longer to get the same distance by quite a lot, probably just because the way the cities are laid out. One can guess Miami probably more freeway style, New York more close quarters. So one thing that surprised me with the rankings is that Los Angeles wasn't in the top five. I thought it would be number two or number three. It sneaks in here at number six. Again, we're looking at metro area, so that accounts for all the surrounding areas. LA is kind of the poster child for bad traffic, at least anecdotally. Everybody talks about the congestion there. Okay, it comes in at number six, average travel time per six miles, 13 minutes, 31 seconds. But if you look at the world rank on congestion, it's number 35. So that's actually the highest on this US list. That's higher than, one higher than Miami. So the way they're ranking it does say something and we will filter by congestion after this. Pointing out real quick, number eight, Anchorage, Alaska. Number eight on the list, but the congestion rank is 375. So it's not congested as one may expect. It just takes longer to get from place to place. Could be a lot of reasons for that. Alaska is a special place. So where is Denver? Well, as we go down the list, we see New Orleans, we see McAllen, Texas, we see Columbia, South Carolina. We're we're in the teens, Las Vegas, Seattle, Boston, no surprise there, Tampa, number 18, Pittsburgh, Washington, D.C. We got to get through Boise, Charleston, Tucson, Arizona, among others, to finally get to Denver, number 28 on the list. Average travel time per six miles, 11 minutes and 19 seconds. The congestion rank is 272. So really not that bad. One above it, Baltimore is 330, but then above that, Anaheim, California, 91. San Jose, California, 169. You're seeing something with congestion in California. No surprise. Again, Charleston, South Carolina, 231, worse than Denver. But as far as pure travel time to get six miles on average, Denver, 28th worse in America. What'd you guys think? Would it be worse? Would it be better? I kind of expected it to be worse. I expected it to be right inside the top 20, just below Denver for reference, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Colorado Springs, New Haven, Connecticut. If you look at the metro areas below Denver, you don't see any big surprises, really. Fresno, Fort Myers, Florida, Austin, Texas, I guess that's a surprise. Orlando, Florida, slightly surprising, but a lot of what you'd expect. So I don't know, I expect based on these rankings, I expected Denver to be a little worse, a little higher up. But what happens? if we filter by congestion, just congestion, meaning how bad it is, how overloaded the roads are, how much longer it takes at peak times, which anymore is pretty much most of the workday versus how long it would take in a free flowing condition. So midnight, let's say. Well, in America, LA is the worst. Okay, that makes sense. Miami, number two, Long Beach, number three, Anaheim, number four and Boston number five. So California really representing in the top five there. But you see by the time we get to number five, which is Boston, the world rank for congestion is still 109. To get to Denver here, we actually have to go two spots below to number 30. So it's the 30th worst traffic metro area in terms of congestion, which I think is the thing that most people are talking about when they complain about traffic. Certainly what I'm talking about. One above it is Ventura, California. One above that is Houston, Texas. Interestingly, at number 27, Boise, Idaho. I would not have expected this. And Denver is just a little worse than New Orleans, Dallas, and Orlando. So those three cities right there, those to me are good cities for comparison. It's just a little worse than New Orleans, Dallas, and Orlando, but it's in that same category. That's how bad the traffic is in Denver right now. Is it awful? Is it LA, New York? No, actually nowhere close. Does it sometimes feel like fighting through Disney World? Yes. All right, I'll link to these pages in the description of the video if I remember. Next year, I got an ABC local affiliate network article here talking about why one of the most aggravating I-25 bottlenecks in Denver won't get better anytime soon. Just want to hit a few points on this. If you live in Denver, you know I-25, pound for pound, probably the worst traffic in the metro area. If you got to get on 25 anytime between 7 a.m., 9.30 a.m. and oh, two to seven at this point, it, you're gonna be fighting traffic. So this article talks about a particular bottleneck, which they say is the seven mile section of I-25 between Santa Fe and 70. So if you look at a map of Denver, and this has got live traffic here, it's not too bad today because I'm recording this at 10 a.m. Santa Fe is right here and 70 is right here. I usually think going northbound, it usually gets better around Colfax after we've hit the Lodo downtown exits. But this stretch right here is what they're talking about. And yeah, this is a stretch of highway that is consistently 
congested. Almost, it seems like it doesn't depend on the time of day. And the article, to summarize, basically just says, well, not much is gonna be done to alleviate this traffic pressure and more people are expected to move in. More housing is expected to be built in these areas. They're talking about investments in public transportation, which, great idea, those are gonna take a while. People ask me, how is public transportation in Denver? I go, eh. The light rail is actually decent if you're going where the light rail goes, which is a few cardinal directions. The bus system's okay. It's actually probably a little bit better than okay, but the culture in Denver, the common way to get around is to drive. How very American of us. When we talk about traffic getting worse, the article does pull up this graphic here from CDOT, which is kind of tough to see probably some of it, but basically this is traffic volume. Starting in 2012, look what happens. It has gone up immeasurably, well, not immeasurably, you can measure, but it's gone up a lot since 2012, really consistently. Then in 2020, there was a drop. Something happened there where people weren't going out as much. Don't remember. And now since then it came back up and really, except for that dip in 2020, it's been pretty flat since, since 2019, at least as far as this graph goes. But the last 10, 12 years, things have gotten significantly worse in terms of traffic. So if you're feeling that, your eyes, ears, and feelings are not deceiving you. And actually, if we go back to the TomTom Tom Denver page, I just saw this, I wanna show this to you because it's interesting. This shows hourly speed and congestion level. Let's take a look at the last 48 hours. It shows you congestion level and speed, 22 miles an hour. So basically, if we're looking at a random Wednesday in January at 5 a.m. here, it's great, there's nothing, no problems, no congestion at all. At 6 a.m., things start to slow down a little bit. By seven, we are at a 32% usual congestion level and things were a little higher yesterday here in January. So it's, it was 37% that day, but then the typical congestion peaks right at 8 a.m. Comes down to a more manageable level by 10 a.m. But you'll see this here throughout the morning and into the early afternoon, it still doesn't come back to those 5 a.m. levels. We're still hovering around 20% congestion level. Then at 2 p.m., things start to pick up again, peaking at 5 p.m., no surprise. And by seven, we're back down in the 20s typically, but it's not till 8% when the usual congestion level goes back to 11%. So more and more, it's it's most of the day on a weekday. If we just take a quick look at a map right here of uh, the Denver Metro, we can look at, so the area that they were talking about is between Santa Fe and I-70 on I-25. This is just really the heart of the city on the most major interstate. It shouldn't be a big surprise, but anytime around rush hour, traffic is going to be bad from 70 all the way down to uh, Evans and Yale, basically around here in Holly Hills, sometimes farther than that. 225 over here on the east side, Traffic is always just decently bad. Never seems to be terrible. Never seems to be nothing. Santa Fe itself, which kind of connects Littleton to, to Denver, to central Denver, can get nasty as or more nasty than I-25. When people are planning on using that as their commute, I say, maybe we rethink this. We look at doing a different type of commute or we go off peak hours. I will say that some of these Southern parts of town are the ones that are more easily connected to downtown with the light rail. So that is a legitimate option if you are close to a light rail station. And there's plenty of other surface streets and other spots of bad traffic too. But the other one that I wanna point out just for the uninitiated is I-70. So I-70 can get rough over here coming to the kind of the east side of town, basically all the way out to the airport if you're going at a peak time. Going out west then in the western suburbs, I haven't seen it get too bad, but it's when you go to the mountains, that's where I-70 really shines in terms of congestion. If you have ever been caught in ski traffic, you know this area around Floyd Hill is where it really starts to slow down. Floyd Hill through Idaho Springs. Empire Georgetown, things can open up, but then once we get Loveland Pass to the tunnel into Silverthorne, this can be a meat grinder. If you're coming down to go to the mountains or if you're coming back from the mountains on a Sunday afternoon on a ski weekend, this can be nasty. Just be ready for it. Okay, back to Denver. As promised, what was that thing about wait, we might not be ticketed as much for driving infractions anymore? Well, yes, that's actually an initiative of the Denver Police Department. So Axios Denver published this actually back in May of 2024. I was unaware this was happening. But what they're saying is the Denver Police Department is initiating an official policy shift to limit officers from making certain low-level traffic stops to free them up to focus on more important things. That to me sounds like a win. Talks about how the agency is short officers, so they're trying to improve efficiency. Police chief says this is a move towards earning and regaining public trust and making better use of our time. Okay, so what does this actually mean? What low-level offenses are not gonna be pulled over and ticketed as much? Well, well, the agency defines them as minor traffic infractions that do not pose an immediate threat to public safety. What does that include? Well, things like expired tags for registration, driving without fully functioning headlights or taillights, 
or failing to use a turn signal. Very interesting because I feel like this has already been going on. I've seen so many people with expired tags basically since COVID. We're talking one, two years expired, driving around willy nilly, failing to use a turn signal. No one here uses turn signals. Many of them, it seems, are broken. And then headlights and taillights. No, I'm kind of joking, but honestly, this seems to be a smart thing to do. They say that you could still be ticketed for these things if you're pulled over for something else, right? That's always a big caveat, but interesting that Denver police are making a concerted effort to ignore these things and focus on, as they say, the more important issues. That to me is interesting. And that to me says, hey, if your tags expired by a month, you know, this is not legal advice, but maybe take your time or don't, don't definitely make sure everything is timely. Be a good citizen. Don't some call and yell at me about this. I hope this was helpful. And hey, if you're interested in what's happening with Denver migration and how it's slowed down in previous years and where people are going instead, here's a video for you on that. Otherwise, love you. Talk soon.